apparently the next one that they have a little bit of a gap on is a guy that you kind of gushed over, Dmitry Simashev. Yeah, he's a stud. So I actually with those two that there's a it, it, there's a, you said there's a big discrepancy between them. Um, I mean, it, the only ones that are being brought up here do, but all that I see here is that Pramen has him as a top 10 player in the class. And then they go into their whole debate, and I'm not going to read all that right now. Yeah. Um, so the, the thing oh, with he that, has him outside. Sorry, it says uh, Wheeler has him outside the first round. Oh, that's crazy. Um, that's wild because I know a lot of people have him as the first defenseman off the board. So, um, yeah, no, the thing with Simishev is just like trying to figure out exactly what he is in the NHL because this is a kid who's six foot, what, four or five? Uh, he might be six three. I was looking up. But typically, like, his player profile, especially as a defenseman, not like the greatest skater in the world. There's kind of like a limit to the ceiling. You kind of think of him as like, if he hits his ceiling, he's like a shutdown guy. The thing with Simishev is like, offensively he should have produced way more than he did a lot of that in my opinion and i know a lot of the euro scouts that we have but smart scouting a lot of guys that watch a lot of submission say the same thing like the russian especially defenseman like development kind of style is like really if you have any kind of like offensive ceiling there's like no you're not going to do that you're going to play ultra conservative you're going to just like rim it out, blah, blah. Simashev is like, he should have produced way more points than he did. Um, the, he's a big kid. He's got unbelievable tools. Like one of the best skaters in this draft as a kid who's six, three, six, four, six, five, however tall he is. I actually don't know. Um, he's a big I mean, he's six, seven. So some of them, like, even not just like, I'm not talking about defensemen who have the puck at the offensive blue line and like walk it. Even when he'll like, I've watched him play a few times where like he's going to retrieve a puck and he's got a four checker coming at him. So he starts skating, you know, laterally one way. And the turns that he's make, like I've watched him send probably three or four oncoming four checkers, like just with a change of direction, like they try to adjust too, but they're going full speed, like fly face first into the boards. Like he is an ankle breaker when he's retrieving pucks. Mm -hmm. Along with that, he's got a phenomenal first pass. He defends exceptionally well. And again, like the plays that he's able to make offensively too, there's so much there that like, if they just, if you can let him continue to develop, um, you know, the offense, there's no reason it won't come. So it's funny because I do think like his floor is a pure defensive, legit shutdown first pair guy, maybe second pair guy, but there's enough foundational tools there that like, he's a stud, man. Like he's really fucking good. So it's interesting when I see people rank, I mean, outside of the first round, that's crazy to me. That to me, it's like taking like the NHL E model where it's like, Oh, for players who produce this many points in this league at this age, like their NHL equivalency is this. Like I, I don't believe in, in that, especially for a guy who is the profile of Simashev, but um, I think he's again, I think his floor is just being a really solid defensive defenseman, like sh legit shutdown guy. So it's it, outside of the first rounds for me is crazy. I, I love mm -hmm. he's awesome. Like, I, I really do love to be Simashev. I'll be curious to see where he goes. I don't, I don't I think he's gonna necessarily you... fit the like, hey, we have to worry about the, the Russian factor thing. I really like. Sure. Because he's not a guy that's going to, like, Mitchkov, it's it's a more of a factor because he's, first of all, signed for a million fucking years. Uh, second of all, it's the fact that he's, a, like, he would be challenging Bedard for first overall, of, like, all things being equal. You don't really have, like, that, I feel like that's kind of a different um, argument for, like, being nervous about drafting a guy too high, too high with the Russian factor thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you uh, actually funny enough, actually took Simashev with the eighth pick in the mock that we ran on draft did lottery I? night. Did I? <laughs> you did. Uh, I know you're high on him, but like 
what do you think is the reasonable range? Like, is, is it even possible to you that he could fall to Minnesota 21 or could fall to the late teens? Or is it like there's just no way he gets past a certain spot? What's the, the number that would shock you if he passed? I mean, I think it's possible for sure. Um, again, like, I think after watching so many drafts and, like, putting the work in on so many players, like, beforehand and think, oh, no way this – I don't really know if anything really would, like, shock me per se, but, like, I think if he gets by, like, 25, you're sitting there like, what the fuck is going on right now? Sure. Like, why? Like, what? Like, what is – what are these teams not seeing? And I – and again, like, I just don't see the Russian factor being – that big of a thing for a lot of teams this year because he's not like a Mitchkov where it's uh, he's he, if like all things being equally challenging for first overall because he would never be challenging for first overall. So right. um, he he's fucking unbelievable, man. Like he's so good. No fair. And Bill chiming in the chat. Bell appreciate you tuning in. I really warmed up to the Wild taking him in the first round. The fact that they have no D with substantial size after watching Vegas win the cup. The skill set and upside is worth it. I mean, if he's still there, is it like a no-brainer that that's who the Wild should take? Or does it kind of depend on your mind? Like, are there other players that could reasonably be available there that you'd be like, nah, I'd still rather. Yeah, I think mean, that's where I land on it. Because, like, I do think that, and I feel like this probably is a thing that happens at any draft that's super deep like this. There are going to be so many teams or so many players available in the twenties that you're sitting there like, what the fuck is going on? Like, mm -hmm. how is this guy still here? So it really would depend on, you know, who else, I mean, so who else is going to fall? Right. Right. Um, again, like the, the thing with him going to Minnesota, I think again, depends who's still, who's still available, but, um, you know, if he's sitting there, the one part of your prospect pool that is like beyond fucking unbelievably better than probably most, if not all, prospect pools is the left side of defense. That being said, if you're going to go pure ceiling, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be a whole lot of players there, though, at 21, where if he's following the 21, you're sitting there like, okay. Yeah. This other player who also has a similar, similarly high ceiling, uh, who also is like this part of our prospect pool who isn't that we don't have like a ton of. Yeah, probably going to go that option. Like, I, I, again, I think there will be plenty of guys there, too, at 21 sure. um, who you're going to be very happy with taking. Um, yeah. So I'll be curious to see, though, because that is like an interesting conundrum right there where it's like, man, fucking Simichev, like, fuck, he's good. Yeah, that's that's the rumor 